Hello, YouTube. Ворота Лейк is a lake in the Аймаконский district of Якутия. This is a Russian republic, and you might have heard Оймакон mentioned in my other videos about Якутия. The lake became widely known thanks to the 1953 expedition of Vasily Tverdokhlebov. On this lake, <coughs> geologist Tverdokhlebov and Bashkatov observed the hunting of a huge animal that simply cannot exist in nature. For the first time, the conversation about the northern monsters was raised by the newspaper Youth of Yakutia in English back in 1958. In 1961, the diaries of Viktor Ivanovich Tordakhlebov, head of the geological party or expedition of the East Siberian branch of the USSR Academy of Sciences, were published in the mag magazine quite popular in the Soviet Union, Vakrug Sveta, or Around the World. They confirmed the existence of a large unknown animal in the Yakut lakes Labinkir and Varota, also 60 meters deep, but smaller in size. I'm talking about Varota. Both lakes are in the same neighborhood and can connect to each other underground. So, again, on July 30, 1953, Tverdokhlebov and radiometrist technician Bashkatov conducted observations of the lake from the Sardanokh Plateau, a remote place. That's what the scientist wrote in his diary. The object was floating quite close. It was something alive, some kind of animal. It moved in an arc, first along the lake, then straight towards us. As it approached, a strange numbness that chilled me inside seized me. A dark gray carcass rose slightly above the water, two symmetrical light spots, similar to the eyes of an animal, stood out clearly, and something like a stick protruded from the body. We saw only a small part of the animal, but a huge, massive body was discernible under the water. The monster moved with a heavy throw, rising slightly out of the water. It rushed forward and then completely immersed in the water. At the same time, waves were coming from its head, were, which were born under the water. Flaps his mouth, catches fish, a gas flashed in the geologist's mind. There was no doubt we saw the devil, the legendary monster of these places. The expedition's guide, Varfalame Vinakurov, knew well about the mysterious animal, told geologists about its habits, but asked for a leaf from the head of the expedition and left the camp early in the morning of the very day when the monster appeared on the lake. This was, this was quite strange, and uh, we'll encounter a person with the same last name a little bit later. And I know somebody who is trying to investigate what happened there and why he left. Anyway, Varota is a small but inaccessible mountain lake with an area of 2.6 square kilometers, and I'll speak more about it later. Legends about a mysterious monster living in the waters of a deep lake are quite widespread in the folklore of the indigenous inhabitants of Siberia, the Evings and Yakuts. These legends have been known since ancient times and continue to exist today. Are this fairy tales with not very good endings, or mystical stories with more, more questions than answers, or the real observations of cryptids. Only one thing is clear. The secret of the relic dinosaur is still kept in the depths of Yakutia's lake. Those who love adventures and mystical stories about mysterious monsters are haunted by Lake Labinkir, that's how it's pronounced correctly, in the east of Yakutia. 
The Yakuts describe the cryptid as a huge dark gray something with such a huge head that the distance between the eyes is equal to a large raft of 10 logs. Encounters with it will not end well. Legends tell of a whole caravan of Evings who moved across the ice of the lake and saw huge horns sticking out of the icy surface. When they approached the horns and tried to saw them off, yes, they're fearless people, those northern hunters. The monsters st stirred, broke the ice, and all the people went under the water. In another legend, the devil got out of the lake and changed the f chased the fishermen, but could not catch up with him. However, the <coughs> this did not help the fisherman. He died of fear. Um, the One of the islands there, the central one, periodically hides underwater, according to the stories of the indigenous population. Yakut legends say that there is a kind of underwater monster <coughs> in it that devours dogs, deer, and even people. Look, there are many such stories. Uh, locals say that one day an unknown creature washed ashore and chased a Yakut fi uh, fisherman, like I said, who died of fear. Another time... Um, eyewitnesses saw how the devil stuck <coughs> its head out of the water and swallowed a swimming dog in one fell swoop, if I can use that phrase. Another amazing incident happened to a local hunter. He tied the reindeer team to an object sticking out from under the ice. Then he built a fire and suddenly heard a terrible crack. Uh, <coughs> the unknown object swayed, the ice cracked, and something huge dragged the deer into the abyss. In 1986, an old terrain vehicle that divers were trying to lift fell through the ice. After another dive into La Benquir, they were so scared that they agreed to dive only on one condition. Either lower us in a metal cage or we refuse to work. What they saw in the depths of the lake can only be guessed. The lake where that creepy monster supposedly lives is located in one of the northern more, northernmost Ulusses. <clears throat> that would be a geographical description, territorial description, of Yakutia. I'm Yakuansky, near the Pole of Cold, at the altitude of 1,020 meters. It is quite large. The length is 14 kilometers and the width is 4 kilometers and deep, up to 60 meters. The Labenkir River of the same name flows into the lake and flows through an icy, non-melting dam. It is northworthy that <coughs> three islands protrude from the depths of the lake and one of them with a diameter of 30 meters and a height of 5 meters is located exactly in the center of the reservoir and has mysterious properties. Residents of the local village of Tampor claim that this island disappears under water from time to time and then reappears. Another mysterious feature of La Benquir is that being near the cold pole, it freezes later than other reservoirs more remote from it, and even then, just by half, in winter, quite large palinias with smooth edges appear on the ice of the lake. The locals nick, nick, nicknamed them dam windows. Sometimes traces of some large animals are found near them, even in a 60-degree frost. Few people risk moving around the lake because the ice can fall in the most unexpected place. Old-timers of Tampur believe that an unknown animal devil, as they call it, has lived in Labenkir since time immemorial. The folk epic tales describes it since the 16th century. And it behaves extremely aggressively. Most often, the object of his hunting is deer. The description of the trait from 
of that trait from different eyewitnesses is almost the same. They all paint this creature as something huge, dark gray in color, with such a big head, again, that the distance between the eyes is no less than the traditional local rafts of 10 logs, which is more than 1.5 meters. One of the fishermen was terribly scared when he saw two large plates under the water on the sides of his boat, very similar to the huge eyes of an unknown animal. And a local collective farmer, Pyotr Vinokurov, so <clears throat> that's apparently a relative of the guide who disappeared, on the northern shore of the lake accidentally picked up a huge jaw of an animal with teeth. When it was placed vertically, a rider on horseback could freely pass under it. After the publication of Tirdakhlebov's diary, in the media, a number of scientific expeditions to the lake were organized. One of them, which began research in the summer of 1962, was led by ichthyologist Kirillov. This and another expedition from representative of the USSR Academy of Sciences, which worked in 1963, um, well, they were looking for the existence of the Yakut monster, but they but they could not find confirmation. But however, about the same time, scientists from Dubna, that's a very famous Soviet scientific city, and I mentioned a tremendously interesting UFO accident in my books. Anyway, on one of the bright nights, observed a large object floating in the distance in Varota Lake, uh, three times, and even managed to take several photos of the traces it left on the water. It goes along the shore and ends with a large, um, interesting trail. I mean, round spot. It looks like an animal has just dived in this place. In 1969, the last attempt was made to find the f this so-called feature of the Lake La Benquer, but it was unsuccessful either. For more than 20 years, scientists had not visited these places. It was only in 1991 that an expedition from Estonia arrived there. With the help of instruments, they fixed a large crack on the bottom of the lake and discovered a large object of unknown origin. But official science ignored this fact. In October, November of 1999, the Cosmopoisk, and I mentioned them quite often in my videos, the Research Association, they studied the paranormal, began study, studying the lakes. Here's what its leader, um, Vadim Chernobrov, he passed away in 2017. He was a tremendously capable young scientist. Here's what he told about the first weeks of the expedition. It was the 12th day of a grueling journey through the frosty taiga. Uh, they can't say that it was difficult for them on the way. No, that's not the right word. It's easier to say that something or someone constantly interfered with progress. They passed over the large, the last ridge and in the gasp between the forest of stunted larches, the shiny surface of the lake finally appeared. Surprisingly, in the extreme cold, the lake was unfrozen. This paradox, which the Cosmopoisk team later talked about in Moscow, greatly surprised all experienced uh, people who knew the taiga. The dog accompanying them, barking, rushed first to the Labankir and then, without reaching the water, as if something had scared it there, came back with a squeal. In the company of people, the fearless husky still became still came closer to the shore, but the two meters from the calm surface of the water, it stood firmly, not closer than two meters. The quiet surface of the lake suddenly frothed, and a lone wave ran across the smooth water. The expedition was equipped with unique instruments that could thoroughly probe the bottom of the lake. With their help, one inclined underground underwater passage and two presumably vertical ones were discovered at the depth of 39 meters. Mysticism to the researchers seemed to be the fact 
that the entire water column within a radius of hundreds of meters turned out to be lifeless. Not a single fish was found near the passages. Was this really the house of that devil? Another mystery awaited the scientists on the shore, not far from the underground caves. Strange footprints were found there. There were no dents on the pebbles, only icy growth. Stalagmites formed from the water flowing down from the body that crawled ashore. Judging by them, it was possible to conclude uh, the width of the alleged animal was more than 1.5 meter. Soon the husky disappeared without a trace, uh, which, and because in the evening it lay down to guard, to guard the boat on the shore, and then it disappeared. And the next morning someone's loud, clearly not human, but some kind of satanic laughter was clearly heard around the tent of the research team. It was repeated several times. An expedition of the area yielded nothing. There were no people or animals nearby. It remained to be assumed that the source of laughter was in the water. Local hunters also said they did not know anyone who could make or imitate such wild sounds. As a result, everyone agreed that these places are infamous. There is a reason for them to be infamous. The participants of the Russian television documentary series Iskateli. And I knew they had um, Andrei Lee of that, um, of that television series. And they knew about my uh, writings and research of Yakutia. That was, I think, a decade ago. It was a very interesting series altogether. Anyway, so the participants took up the next search for the Yakut underwater monster. They were equipped with the most modern instruments, echo sounders and a remote-controlled underwater vehicle, Gnome. Uh, the echo sounder showed an unusual depth difference at the bottom of the lake, from 40 to 86 meters. There was a crack or an underwater channel. At the depth of 42 meters, the device recorded a large object, but it was not possible to determine what it was. Strange storms occurred in the area of the underwater channel. The fish did not approach this place closer than 20, 30 meters. Um, it's, it's like it seemed to be acting very careful as it was scared of something. It was surprising and incomprehensible, especially considering that no one had dived into the lake for decades. On the screen of the deep sea probe Gnome, which explored the area of the crack, the search engines saw an image of a large number of remains and bones of some animals. One of the skulls was very familiar, like that of a horse's, although there is no, basically there is no housing. Nobody lives in the area for tens of kilometers. I think there are a few huts in the area, I mean, judging by 20, 20 uh, information, but that's about it. So the question they ask themselves, maybe the place is the kitchen of the underwater devil, so to say. The Scottily team had developed a daring plan to capture the monster, as they, or the cryptid. At first they used very durable fishing gear made of modern material, but at the depth of 49 meters, they were breached. Uh, then it was decided to catch uh, with live bait. A, an empty 200-liter barrel was used as a float. Imagine the amazement of the expedition members when they didn't find it on the surface of the water. One can only guess what size an animal has to be in order to drown and drag such a float to the bottom of the lake. At night, strange and very unpleasant sounds came from the lake. There was an inexplicable tension in the air. The satanic voice recorded on highly sensitive equipment was subsequently analyzed by experts in Moscow. They came to the conclusion that the sound does not belong to any known living being. Lake Labenkir continues to retain its secrets around which many hypotheses and assumptions are circulating. According to them, the Yakut devil has already tried on many guises. 
The simplest and most easily explained is the so-called fish hypothesis. Uh, the Labanker monster is represented in the form of a giant pike, burbot, or catfish. But an overgrown fish cannot live that long. And there must be at least two of them to procreate. Maybe the lake was chosen by giant representatives of pinnipeds. Uh, among them, there are predators such as the sea leopard, or maybe a seal, but then they definitely need a coastal rookery to breed. Scientists also mention belugas, sperm whales, narwhals, and killer whales. There's also a hypothesis about the Siberian dinosaur. Uh, but like I said, uh, you know, there's still no, no, there's still no confirmation. Does it live in icy waters laying eggs there? It remains to be hoped that the mystery of the Yakut devil will still be revealed someday. Moreover, the monster from Labinkir has many relatives all over the world, and I, I don't have to tell you about them. You can see my videos about such strange cryptids in China, for example. You can do your own research. But let's look more at Varota, a small but inaccessible mountain lake. And I told you, it's 2.6 square kilometers. It's not a huge lake. But why is the lake called Gate, Varota in Russian? The lake is located in a gorge between two peaks and is perceived as a passage between mountains. According to the expedition's diary entries, the lake looked lifeless and the water seemed heavy. Um, the expedition that studied it uh, built a fragile raft and measured the depth of the lake to be 60 meters. This corresponded to the theory and depth of Lake Labinkir. It is very important to understand that the remote Sardanoch Plateau is a system of lakes. Above Lake Varota, there are channels again that connect to Lake Verknia. By the way, this information is based on the results of the 2014 expedition of the Institute of Biological Problems of the Cryolitha Zone of the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, the Limnological Institute of the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences and the National Research Irkutsk Technical University. So that's the expedition I'm referring to now. The geophysical study of the lake was carried out using a linear frequency modulation prolifograph and no profilograph and a multipath echo sounder. Such equipment makes it possible to determine the structure and thickness of the sedimentary cover of the reservoir, as well as to obtain a detailed bathymetric map. On Lake Varota, the thickness of the sedimentary cover is about 3 meters, which is 3.3 times less than on Lake Labenkir, 10 meters of bottom sediments. Located only 23 kilometers away and having a similar origin. In particular, this may mean that the sedimentary material leaves Varota Lake into underwater cavities. Therefore, a detailed study of the bottom of the reservoir has great scientific value. It turned out that the relief of the lake bottom is replete with two types of underwater structures, underwater hills and underwater pits. Three particularly deep pits were discovered, each with a diameter of about 10 meters and with a sharp drop in depth of several tens of meters. All three underwater wells are located quite closely to each other. The depth of the wells is about 90 meters, but possibly more. It resemble, resembles a karst underwater cave of the three nostrils type. The origin of the lake is defined as thermokarst. These data are extremely important for the continuation of the cryptozoological um, hypothesis of the 1953 expedition. The biological resources of Lake Varota can hardly be enough for a stable population of ancient species of large living creatures. 
Even if we allow them to move freely through the channels in the Varota, Verkhnya, Burnea, Nachnoya lake system. But if this system is just the tip of the iceberg of a giant underground reservoir, then the picture is different. Anxious species could go underwater and land, go and land before the sunset, before the onset of the glacier, survive the glacier and remain in the outer underwater system to the present day. It is very difficult to assess the biological resources of underground waters, as well as the temperature of groundwater, their chemical composition, and the biomass of subsurface phytoplankton. But the main thing that we have now is the material grounds for the cryptozoological hypothesis of the biological anomaly of the Sardanok Plateau. Understand this. This is very important. Giant underwater reservoir and cryptids that exist in it, in Yakutia. I know of one dedicated and tenacious researcher who is determined to find out the cryptids of the plateau. I'll keep you updated. As of now, he is on an expedition trying to find out. And I, like I said, I'll give you the results of his expedition once he publishes them. Thank you for your attention to my work. If you like it, and if you can support my research, you'll find the links in the description to this video. Please tell others about my work and please uh, like my videos. Thank you for your attention.